can hear. You okay. can't hear? Oh. Can you hear, Sherry? All right. I'm eating my dinner, so I'm going to mute myself, and that's why I don't have my camera on. Thank okay. you. <laughs> My email changed three years ago, and Sherry still sends all this crap to my old email that I can't access. We're all a little slow. <laughs> she says she changes it every time. What's she trying to do? Hi, Dan. Can you hear anybody? I can't hear anybody. I can hear you. <laughs> you can hear me? Uh-huh. You just how come, heard you us? how come you don't send these things to my real email address? I have I have to bother Neil during his dinner to have him forward it to me. Okay, let's all just drive down to the town hall. This is ridiculous. Sherry, could you hear us? Dave, can you hear anybody? I could hear everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I am not good at reading lips. I can hear you. Um, You're on mute. Something's so. weird tonight, guys, because usually the host of the meeting would come on and greet us and make sure everybody was in. Ah, there he is. I'm here, Sherry. I, if you, you can't hear me, uh, I'd suggest you, you log off and log back in. Yes. Hi, I can't, he I can't hear anybody. Somebody want to text her? <laughs> That's I just put a message in the chat. Okay. <laughs> maybe just, she didn't I maybe she didn't pay her bill chat. her meet me bill <laughs> that's what happens when you ignore those meet me bills no it's it's the moderator's fault for sure <laughs> did we pay our bill this month one second probably not hey What's Did this? she unmute? Not mute. Is there a, was it volume up? So, David, welcome to the chaos. <laughs> It hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except except now we have to do it like this. Well, hopefully it's only for a short time. Has anybody Chaos is for is eternity. <laughs> Has anybody come down with COVID? Who didn't? No. My my daughter, we made it two years. The first person in my family, my daughter, about three weeks ago. Okay. Really? Yep. Just a mild case. Yeah, it was, it was no big deal. Um, so I actually, because my kids, they all work. Um, we, I think we, we made up quite well for, for, you know, for two years and, and just getting it. Yeah. Or was it just a Omicron or you just did a, a test? Uh, yeah, I just did the home tests and she had the classic symptoms. Um, and I'm glad no one, else, no one else in the house got it, as far as I know. It's a, it's a hard time in the year to get diagnosed between the two, and the other one would be um, hay fever or allergies. Everybody's coming down with allergies. Well, yep. Yep. I was in California, and I was in L.A. for two weeks, and between doing this, that, and the other thing, man, there's not very many people wearing masks anywhere. And, oh, no. but for, 
you try, I, for the most part, I'm trying to be outdoors or a little bit separate. I mean, I don't want to get too cozy with people. I just don't want to get sick. I've gotten so used to, not used to, I, I appreciate just not getting sick, even a cold that I just don't want to get anything. I, I actually had my only COVID test before my surgery. It's the only test I ever had. I've never had a COVID test yet or never had to take one yet. Nancy's never had one either. And, you know, she worked right through the whole, the whole thing, 12 hours a day, six or seven days a week. And she never had a test. Well, that's something considering where she works now. I know, huh? I think my wife's taken four of them because um, of exposure to, uh, I don't know, maybe the kid wasn't feeling well or whatever. And she has a second job taking care of a, an elderly gentleman. So she wants to be sure that she doesn't have it. We've taken it. I still can't hear anybody. I don't know what's up. Are your speakers on? He told me to log out and try logging back in, which I did. I guess I'll try that one more time. I'm going no, 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 back no. to the beginning. Turn your volume up. I can't hear any of you. It's just, she's at the town hall. Somebody should go down to the town hall and rescue her. I don't have pants on. <laughs> turn your speakers. Turn up volume, volume is up. <laughs> TMI, Dan. TMI. <laughs> it's all right. My speakers are on. Are they plugged in? <laughs> Does she join Zoom with audio? <laughs> yeah. Now, we were in California two weeks ago also. We were totally surprised that even though LAX required you have a mask, Nobody was wearing a mask. <laughs> I, I heard the I heard the announcement that the masks were required, although that kind of conflicted with the the ruling that came out. So m almost nobody was actually wearing one. No. Um, the, the well, when I went there, everybody was. It was the rule, and then when I left to come back, almost nobody was. Well, half few people were wearing it. Oh, here and there, and that's about it. When we flew out, we flew out last mon Monday night, and there were very few people with masks on, and yeah. very few. But even when we're going around, we're up in Santa Barbara area, and nobody was wearing a mask anywhere. It just hoped. everybody was just walking around like nothing was going on. Yeah, right. We were, we're just done with it, I guess. I was on, uh, I was, uh, went to Santa Monica, rented jet skis with my son. We were oh, wow. um, tooling around um, um, of Venice Beach. Oh boy, what a show that is. Um, Beverly Hills. And we didn't get to Beverly awesome. Hills. And we went to Ventura and Santa Monica, same as you. Well, we were up in the um, central parts, Santa Maria, uh, Pismo Beach area. Uh -huh. So we're out there. She didn't answer her phone. All right. All right. <laughs> What is that? What does that little red thing in the corner of her name mean? No, no microphone or no speaker. She's on uh, mute. Mute. That could have something to do with it. <laughs> now, is Sherry the only one that's having audio problems? As far as we know, yes. It sounds like. Okay. It says mute, I guess, on her thing. Yeah. No. She well, she's muted, so she can't use the microphone right now. But her problem was her speaker, not her microphone. We shouldn't. Nah. And so I don't think it's I, I don't think it's on Zoom's end because no, it's be, probably her. Got to be on her end. Sorry. It's kind of like my mom when she used to try to get her email. <laughs> it's good she can't hear you right now. Dave's trying to. I tried to call her.
Uh, she's not picking up. <laughs> no, I, and when I she comes back in, uh, we can also note that she can dial in on the phone for audio. <laughs> How she well, Nielsen could couldn't hurt to know how she's doing it using the web browser, using the app, blah blah blah. Hmm. <clears throat> she should click that little arrow that's right next to the mute button and it tells you if your uh, speakers are on or not. Test speakers and microphone, switch yep. the phone audio. Yeah, she should look there. She answered her phone, I'd tell her. The computer she has is kind of a miserable thing at work. Who sent that message? Call office phone, please. Uh, Sherry, who sent it. So how can everybody call the office phone at once? Well, who would like to call her? <laughs> I'll call her. Oh, Andrew or Neil, they're on mute, so probably they're um, calling her. Hello, Dan. What are you doing? Trying like hell to get some sound. You're not on Zoom anymore. I have up on the screen right now, screen right now is please wait, the meeting host will connect you. The meeting yeah, is being recorded. You're coming, coming in now. now. Listen, if you go over on the, well, when you get here. There's a toolbar on the bottom where on the far left it says mute. Yes. If you click the little arrow, just the little arrow in the corner. Yeah. And, and then you go up, it says select speakers, test speakers and microphone. Yeah. You try that stuff? I haven't. I got select a microphone, same as system, microphone HD, same as system, speakers, Acer, leave computer audio and audio options. Is the speaker thing checked? Um... Does it have a check mark next to it? I can hear you, Dan. Can you hear me? Uh huh. You guys are on the phone, though, aren't you? No. no. I can hear can you hear me, Dave? Yes. Okay. Success. Exactly where you were saying, Dan, apparently the speakers were not on. Yeah, I knew Sorry, that. you guys. Can you all hear each other? Uh-huh. Great. We've all been talking about you. <laughs> Don't <laughs> tell her. It's all right. They were, they were recording, so there's evidence. Oh, geez. I forgot about that. <laughs> Hi, okay. Garth. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. All right. And Andrew, you're here? Yes, ma'am. And Neil? Hmm. Nope. <laughs> no, Neil, no Leslie tonight. Neil's I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm just uh, cleaning up dinner. So I'm around. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, Neil. Um, so why are we still doing this on Zoom? Because the town of not, has not approved in-person meetings yet. We're trying hard to get to a hybrid thing. Um, where we can meet in person and on Zoom at, together at the same time. 
but they have not approved uh, in-person meetings yet. I asked they, about it last week because I'm sick of this too, Dan. How about if they're outdoors? Then you're still not recorded. And, oh, so and they, people they, from the public are not welcome if it's not Zoomed. So our old way of doing meetings may, may be passe. I don't know. They just want them all recorded. That's why we're doing it. It has yes. nothing to do with anything else. Um, hi, Dave. I'm sorry that uh, I couldn't communicate with you earlier. How are you doing tonight? Good. Good. Did you meet everybody around the room? Yes, we've been talking. We've been talking about our vacations. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Are you back from your vacation? Yes, we flew back in last week. So. All right. Spent and I forget where you were. California. <laughs> nice. Yeah, How's Central the weather California. out there? Um, it was in the um, low 50s. But we went inland, it was up to 82. Um, so we drove about an hour and a half east. It's uh, temperature shot up dramatically. So we're mainly on the coast. Nice. Great. I, um, are, is everybody ready to get started with the agenda? Yes, I should okay. look at it. All right, so we had a couple of um, a couple of introductions tonight. I guess Dave is already done. And um, unfortunately, I heard from Amanda Holden um, a little bit earlier this afternoon that she would not be able to make it. But she is interested in the Rec Commission and hopes to join us next month. Um, and I think that she is willing to be um, our secretary, which, as you know, we have needed um, badly. She has those skills, those good computer skills for taking notes and uh, putting out uh, uh, minutes and everything. So I'm really hopeful that Amanda will, will take that over from Sandy Moquin. Um, I think you guys saw in the update that I sent, um, Sandy Moquin lost her sister a couple of weeks ago. And so, um, you mean the bus driver? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Karen Holmes is her sister and she did pass away. I did go to her funeral service. What? I believe it was last Friday. Um, and it was very nice. Um, but uh, Sandy mentioned to me that she hoped to get back to the Rec Commission um, in the future. Um, but I still would like to move in the direction of having Amanda um, Holden become the secretary. And Dave, did you mention to them um, no. that you may be interested in coming back possibly as chairman of our Rec Commission and about uh, your history with the Rec Commission? No, I didn't mention anything. We we're just um, talking and just talking. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Well, I, I don't know if any of you were on the rec commission when Dave was before. And Dave, I don't have the dates or years in my head very well, but it was about 10 years ago, maybe. Am I close there? It was from, I think, 1990, um, 1999 through 2005. 99 to 2005. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And, um, it was a couple of years. I remember it's a couple of years before you came on. And um, then it was three or four years after that. Okay. All right. And uh, so Dave and I have worked together in the past before, and he has lots of great skills and things to contribute to us. Um, and we've always had a chairperson that's like been on the commission for a while or is, has at least, you know, seen the seasons with us and know the scope of our program. So Dave does come with that history and that background. And, you know, we're kind of hopeful that this will work out going forward. As you guys all know, we have needed a chairperson for, I think it's been three years now, four years since Kim Ayers left us. Can't be um, four years, no. 
Huh? Oh, yeah. There's a whole year and a half in there where nothing happened. Yeah, it could be four years. Wow. Yep. There's, yeah. a big, there's a big void, the COVID void. Uh, yeah, it's a real time warp in there, isn't it? Um, I don't believe we have any public to be heard. Um, as far as the financial report goes, uh, let me see if I can grab that. Uh-oh, who do we lose? We seem to have lost Neil. I didn't print out the most recent one, so I don't have it right here handy. But what I do have is an income report. Three. Four, eight. Um, right now, year to date income is just about $28,000 um, that we have taken in. So I think we're doing very well. Of course, our target for an average year is $35,000 a year. Um, I think you guys remember from the last meeting we had. We had a very good basketball season. We got uh, um, back on par with what we would normally do in terms of our basketball program income. And since then we have um, started uh, gymnastics, which had 20 on a wait list and we had to open another class for it. Those two gymnastic classes are wrapping up. One wrapped up last week, one wraps up this week. Our numbers for Tai Chi and yoga are, are just enough for it to run, but those two adult programs are running. We have swim lessons running and swim club running. Um, and today was the first day for an adult pickleball class and I didn't think we were gonna get enough for it and we did. So things are off and running and income is coming in in all of those programs. Um, we also are offering uh, a trip to the Bronx Zoo. It's my trip to run. It's coming up on June 4th. It's the first, we've done no bus trips in all of COVID. This is our first venture back into it. And uh, bus trips have always been kind of an enigma to figure out. So here's what we've got. When we run the bus trips, we always break even at 35 people. Right now we have four that have signed up for Ashford. We have zero from Mansfield. We have zero from Bolton. And we have 18 from Tolland and 19 from Coventry. So I don't know if you did the math, but that's around 41 people um, so it'll go, but we have some towns with very little response and then other towns that are calling, Hey, can I have some more of your tickets? Can I have some more of your tickets? Cause they've sold out. So it's really hard to figure out what's happening there, but we're, I, I made the call that, um, we want the trip to go. Let's not turn anybody away. I don't care what town they're from. Usually we would give each town 12 tickets. But like I said, we don't want to turn somebody away and then have the trip not fill. Um, but we are at uh, our, you know, we are at 41 and we needed 35 for it to break even. So looks like the Bronx Zoo trip will go on Saturday, June 4th. What's the max Other people trip? on the bus? What was that? What's the max capacity? Bus capacity is 55. Oh, wait. Do we get, yeah, what about the uh, COVID restrictions? For what? Um, I don't believe we're following any COVID restrictions at this time for a coach bus. Okay. Mask use would be optional. 
Hey, hi there, Leslie. Are you here? Yes. Can can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. My apologies for being late. I've been I just got done work, so I'm sorry. Ah. All right. Glad you could zoom in. Leslie, can you see Dave Rostin on the screen? Um there Top we left. Yes, hi Dave. <laughs> hi. Do you guys know each other? No, I just don't want to scare you with this video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, come on. <laughs> girl. So Okay, anyway, welcome Leslie. Glad to have you here. Um pickleball. Like I said, we have a beginner class that started today and we also have um, so at 1130, we got a new beginner class going at one o'clock on Mondays. We have the old class that did the beginner uh, instructional class last year. And that group has stuck together for the year and keep playing. So we had a bunch of pickleball people out there today. Tomorrow at four o'clock is the intermediate group. So if you guys know of anybody that wants to learn about pickleball, uh, like a newbie beginner, have them give me a call and we'll try to incorporate them into our 1130 on Monday class. Um, or if one o'clock works for them, that's good too. Our Tuesday group is more intermediate level. Um, the big news with pickleball is of course that we're trying to get the court resurfaced. Um, it was very good that the budget passed last week because it is one of the capital improvement projects that's been approved. <coughs> However, they said that they're funding it from um, the American Rescue Funds. So I believe you will be getting notification of a vote that has to happen on how those American Rescue Funds get used. And the goal is to have one of the projects, there's many, but one of the projects would be the resurfacing of the pickleball courts. Um, one thing we have to decide on is the price, there's three bids, they're all comparable. Um, we have to decide if we want two pickleball courts over there as it is now, or if we think we should go with four. I don't want to be short-sighted and, and live too contentedly in what we've got, especially if we really believe that this sport's going to grow and take off. Um, but historically, in the last year or so, there's really only been maybe, I don't know, three or four times out there that we would have used more than two pickleball courts. Um, they are recommending that we change the orientation of the pickleball courts um, because of the sun. They want them to go the same way as the tennis court. Right now, the lines we put down are perpendicular. But if there is room for four courts there, if we wanted to do it. Um, and how pickleball works, for those of you who don't play, the game is really played with four people on a court. So with two courts, we service eight people. If you have 10 or so, it's really no problem to set, sit out and then, then you rotate them in. Um, and usually it works you know, fine that two people wanna rest or take a break for a game. They play shorter games if people are waiting, so they rotate, rotate them in. It's really a very friendly, uh, fun sport. Does anybody have any comments or heard anything from anybody about whether they think we should do two or four pickleball courts out there? Is there, okay. a, oops, sorry. How much more, is there a cost difference or? How much? There would be, and I'm not sure how much, I'm sure we'd have to pay the company more for two more courts to get them lined and, and uh, um, it would be a matter of uh, hundreds of dollars more, like I'm guessing maybe five or 600 more to, to line out a couple more courts. What, what holds a pickleball net up? Is it, is it going to the ground or is it, is it it's, just? Um, it's, it's really cool, Dan. It all comes in a little case about four feet long and it's a zippered up thing. 
and in it are the poles that hitch together. And then the poles stick into the base that oh, you have there. So there's no there's no thing going into the into the surface. Nothing into the ground for it, no. Oh, okay. And it makes it nice because pickleball is very portable. You put it all back up and we keep it in that um, locker um, locker box that we have in the corner of the tennis court now. And someone could come and take a pickleball net and all the standards and go somewhere else and play. So it's very portable. Our two nets that we have were purchased by the senior center about three years ago. They didn't want to use them, so they gave them to us. And they've gotten a lot of use in the last three years. So at some point, we'll need to purchase some more sets. They run around $350 for a good set. Okay. That doesn't sound like a big deal. It what isn't. Is it? No. The, whole, the whole sport of pickleball, um, Andrew, is not a big deal. And that's what's so great about it. You only need four people to play. The equipment's not um, too expensive. Yes, it can get competitive, but how serious can you get whacking a wiffle ball around? You know, it's just fun. It's easy. It's relaxed. It's fun. It's way easier than tennis. Um, you get a lot more play across the net because of that. And older people really enjoy it because they aren't trying to cover a tennis court. It's only about half the size of a tennis court. And kids can pick it up easier than tennis, too. So I hope you guys will come out and try it sometime. It really is fun. How is it on your joints? Um, you are moving. You're, you know, changing direction, but it's easier than tennis or other court sports. Depends on your competition. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's true. I, I actually do have one question. You mentioned before the, um, the COVID funding aspect of yes. it. Yes. You said that there had to be a vote on how that money is to be spent. Um, what would be the competition for the monies? Oh, I haven't actually looked at all that, um, Andrew, because I know that the Capital Improvements Committee approved our project. Um, I'd have to ask Bill and get a list for you, but I certainly can check that out. I know our project was not one of the bigger ones, um, but they did have to channel certain projects toward capital improvements and certain projects toward that ARPA funding because there are restrictions and guidelines. It has to be um, used for things that were lost because of COVID. Is that more for economic um, development or recovery? Yeah, recovery. I think I'd use the word recovery there. Um, Bill Folletti the best one to talk to on that, guys. I've heard a little bit on it. I haven't delved into it. Um, and I don't know what other projects are competing for that money. All right, since it was approved and the funding is coming through ARPA and the ARPA funding needs to be voted upon and if the ARPA funding is voted down for the port how is that going to go about how what's going to go on that part is it just going to be dropped altogether or no, where is the funding think, going to be um, coming? It's kind of a weird situation. It is. I think that it's almost more of a, we have our funding, your selectmen and your capital improvements committee um, have prioritized these projects. Voters come in and give your okay on it or attend this hearing if you think something else should happen differently. I think at this point, it's the town kind of rubber stamping it. 
I could be wrong, but that was my sense. The, so there's, there's going to the be a competition or the discussion for how that money should be spent has already happened. And now it's just like a final approval. And is there going to be a vote for the, the town to do it or to approve these funding or this yep. funding? And hopefully it's this month. And it'll go out in the next publication of the. No, I think it'll be a special thing sent to your home. It won't go out in the citizen. They want to do it in May. Okay. Okay. I can find out more on about that for you, Andrew, or I'd really recommend having a conversation with Bill Folletti on it. It sounds like an unusual situation. It does. <laughs> Sounds like what? Unusual situation. Um, actually, I think it's pretty standard. Mm. All right. um, okay. That's it on pickleball. Anybody, nobody gave me a, a, a hint to four courts or two courts. Anybody have any input there? I would go with four. Jerry, I'd, I'd ask for four, and if you get it, great. If you don't, that's fine too, right? Okay. Uh, if we do four, would that mean there's no tennis court, or could it be dual use? The tennis court stays. There will still be tennis there, and two or four pickleball courts. Yeah, I mean, if the tennis stays, then yeah, go for more. Okay. Good advice there, guys. I like that. Thank you. Um, all right. Summer concerts. We have um, some of them already lined up. I think I put that right on the agenda. No, I didn't say who they were. Okay. Here's what we got so far, guys. Based upon our last meeting when we talked about some um, I went to that list that we selected and we have hired now for our first concert on Tuesday, July 5th, 357 band. Neil's one of Neil's favorites. <laughs> that guy, Sean Metcalf is still leader of the band. He was very nice to talk to again, Neil. And Excellent. we zeroed in on July 5th. Very good, Sherry. Oh, yes. I, um, on July 12th, we have Night Shift coming. That's Kenny Hicks from Kenny Hicks and band from Coventry. We had them about four years ago. Okay, the first band is costing us $700. The second band is costing us $750. Um, we are open on the 19th. On the 26th, we have a band coming called Already Gone, and they are the Eagles tribute band. And then we have an opening on Tuesday, July 2nd. So Already Gone is 8.50. Where are we at? 8.50, 7.50, and 700. Zero, one. 2300 16 and 7 is 2300 Oh, we're doing okay, you guys. Did I add that right? Zero, yes. zero, zero. We're at 2300 and our concert budget is 35. So we still have 1200 $1200 for two more bins. I was thinking we had to go um you know, way inexpensive, like just get a duo or a trio. But what we actually have is $600 per band or, you know, how it, it can work out. Maybe one will be 500, one will be 700. Um, these days, it's pretty hard to get professional musicians for under 500. 
Um, so I was thinking about a duo or a trio. I had a small list going here. Um, there's a band called Southern Voice that I think would be interesting. Anybody know anything about the Willie and Jan band? Who? Willie and Jan. No. Um, who else did we have here? I've never heard of them. Um, so I was looking for more duos and trios for the last two. Last year we had the Carry Boys and they're a, a Celtic group. So we probably wouldn't bring them back again this year. We might wait a few. Um, but I'd also like to get them booked soon. After we get the bands booked, um, we can start working on the food piece of it. <clears throat> Any other thoughts on um, a band? I'd have to go back to our minutes from last meeting to see how many others were suggested. Um, Garth, I looked up the one that you suggested, Silk, uh, the Silks, out of Rhode Island, and they were out of our price range. They were over a thousand. Okay. So if it's not on the tip of your tongue right now, um, but you think of a band you remember that was really good or that you would like me to pursue in the next week, please shoot me a email or their name because I am going to try to fill those other two slots. We have right now we have July 19th open and August 2nd. This is a little odd request, but um. Do we have like the option like the first data? Neil, I can't hear you great. Are you talking right into the microphone? Yeah, hold, hold on. Let me um take you off uh, Bluetooth. That better? Yes. <laughs> Do we have the option for like impersonators? So like sure, uh a, a prince, you know, a prince impersonator or Elvis Presley or something like that. That, I don't know if that would be, you know, it's just turn it out there, you know. Yeah, I like the idea, Neil. What do you guys think of that? I personally love Prince. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I kind of, that's why I mentioned it because there's actually a couple of really good prince or impersonators around. I don't know if they would fit in our budget, but you know. Now, how about a comedian act? I don't know yep, if that's like that a summer too. concert thing, but com comedian stuff. I like the idea of a comedy night as a fundraiser kind of thing, Andrew. I, I see it as something separate and different from our summer concert series. What do you guys think? I'll be right back. You can add that to our fun ratings in the list. Where is that? Ratings in the list. There it is. Yeah, that's not on there. I like the idea, Sherry. All right. Sherry, can you refresh my memory? The woman that helped out at the um, Christmas event, was it red? I want to say. She sang with a band, right? I don't yes. know, red velvet or red silk. Yes, or... red satin. Red satin. Um, 
<laughs> yes. Um, Val Rogers is her name. Yes, she was excellent. Yes, she is. And I know she's going to be, pl she plays in the Willington summer concert every year, but we certainly should be asking her since she donated her services to us last year. Um, Leslie for the carol sing, we uh, certainly ought to, you know, yeah. pay her for her, her singing too. Um, I'll check in with her and see if she comes with a band, I know when I've seen her the last two years over in Willington, she's been a solo performer. Mm -hmm. um, I know she plays with a band in Hartford, right? Months a month or something. I don't know the name of them. Ah, um, thank you for mentioning that. I'm gonna put her on the list right now for somebody to talk to. Um, um i know that bruce john is also really popular um i've had some requests for him um um i'm trying to remember there's that country singer too that we've had going back a few years hmm. Johnny Cash. And he comes with his brothers. Um, we should get Johnny Cash. Name will come to me. I remember because they were on the lower end um, budget wise. So, anyway, if you got any more bands, duos or trios to throw out, please do it in the next week because I'm going to try to nail them down. I don't really go out and see bands anymore. I'm really in the dark about them. Hmm. I used to go out and see bands a lot. Um, so part of what brought up uh, the conversation with Dave coming on the Rec Commission and hopefully getting Amanda Holden to become our secretary was also, as you know, or maybe don't remember, but in April every year, commissioners terms come up for renewal. And so we've got some positions to be filled, but I was also supposed to, the two that were up um, for renewal was Neil and Garth. Oh, I thought I was being fired. <laughs> no, you're on, Andrew. <laughs> and typically we don't let go of anybody unless you send us a letter saying, I really, really can't do this anymore. And if you so don't show Christine asked me, I spoke for you guys and said, yeah, they're good. Keep them on. <laughs> but uh, now we're getting official and I do need to ask you and make sure that you want to stay on the commission. And that's Neil and Garth were the two that were up this April. Yeah, I plan once I'm a <laughs> president, I'll, I'll stick around. But so, yes. Great. April. Thank you, Neil. April 21. Three? No. Last month. Yeah, we're a little late. Right. Ah. We didn't meet last month. So you so don't I have couldn't a ask you guys then. You're on, dude. Tough. Yeah. Garth. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Can you give us an update of what your plans are? I know that you have some plans. I do have some plans. I think that I will um, not renew. Um, as you know, I'm going to be away for five weeks. And then next summer, uh, I don't know, I might not even be around. Are you looking to go to Colorado like your plan was? Yeah, probably that someplace. You're going to be around next year, though. Your kids are still uh, seniors in high school. No, they gra they'll, they'll be graduating a year from now. Right, in a year. Yep. They'll be fine. They're going to be home this uh, summer when I'm away for five weeks. They're going to be home. I mean, they'll come out for a week, maybe two, but they'll be home. Yeah. So Garth, what would you think about staying on for one more year while they're seniors in high school? And then next summer, we'll let you go if you really need to. 
I know the full term is three years, but I'd love to keep you on for another year if we can. And I appreciate you being willing to do bike camp with us the end of June this year before you go. And we'll miss you. <laughs> right. And with the way technology is nowadays, you can do everything remotely on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I'm just changing. I'm just kind of getting out of stuff and doing less work and less. I just I'm getting to be selfish right now. Nah, that's cool. We're just trying to pressure you to make sure you don't like, you know, be selfish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, Sherry. I, I, I was for a few months now. I've been thinking that uh, uh, just doing something else. But I'll, I'll get back to you. We don't need to take up time here. Do what you need to do, dude. All right, Garth. We'll talk some more. I, I did want to. Um... Thank you for all you've done through the years, Garth. It's it's been great. I do know that you have you know plans going in other directions and all. Um, and for the rest of you on the commission, um, Garth holds the distinguished position of being the rec commissioner who has generated the most income for Ashford Park and Rec through his. Um, Ashford metric century bike ride that he did for I don't know how many years Garth I know it was nine I was, was trying nine to right ten and you said no I remember it was nine and then also our bike camp every year has brought in at least uh, oh usually around eight hundred dollars each year that we do that and Garth has been great with that um so Thanks, we will Garth. miss you on that front for sure, Garth. And also, um, you know, just thank you for all the support through the years. Thank you for saying that. Um, okay, moving on to new business. Um, Bill Folletti has a vision of... Uh, making Memorial Day and the 4th of July something bigger in Ashford. I don't know if you guys have participated in any of it. I know they do a Memorial Day service around the monument and then go over for a little music out of the gazebo. Um, I know there hasn't been a parade or much of a parade in Ashford now for a, a number of years, but he hopes to bring that back. And he also hopes to make 4th of July weekend, um, you know, a little bigger and better and more act active and um, with something going on each day of that weekend. He needs fireworks. Uh, fireworks is a possibility out of Hole in the Wall Gang Camp. I know it was something that he mentioned he was going to see if Hole in the Wall could do that on 4th of July. Um, we're also talking about possibly getting a baseball game going down at the park. He also was hoping uh, to have a parade, but I think parades are pretty tough to pull off and that lots of towns are asking for like EO Smith band and other bands um, to be present uh, at various parades and they can only get to a few each day. So we'll see. Do you, um, please think on it. Bill would like some ideas and some suggestions about what we might do uh, to, to add to the festivities of Memorial Day or 4th of July. Well, I can tell you ahead of time that both of those holidays, I will not be in the state. <laughs> and uh, I hear you, Andrew. I let Bill know that I am traditionally out of town on Memorial Day, um, but could be around for 4th of July if needed. But it's certainly a time when families gather and wherever that is, you know, mm -hmm. people travel a lot. How about the rest of you? Are most of you in town for those holidays or gone? 
Depends on which day, I guess. We have something for that for Memorial Day weekend. I'm not really sure which day it is right now. I will be out of town, Sherry. Yeah, I was going to say, Leslie, you're usually on the Cape. Andrew, you're usually on Long Island, right? Correct. Neil, how about you? You go gone fishing? Gone fishing. I I'm actually checking now to see what I'm up to. Yep. How about you, Dave? Are you usually around for those holidays or gone? Gone. Usually gone. <laughs> usually gone yes yeah that's what i'm a little bit afraid of like i don't want to commit us to yeah bill we'll do this <laughs> that, or the other thing and then find out wow everybody else is gone um All right, so but we'll, we'll tread we'll tread slowly and carefully there and lightly yeah for now i don't have any any going away plans for either day. okay so I'm the only um, loser who's sticking around. <laughs> Don't say that. Um, You're so not a next, loser, Neil. Next on the agenda, you guys, is park maintenance. And I wanted to update you a little bit on a few things there. We've already talked about the pickleball court at uh, Pompey Hollow Park. That's a project for this summer. Um, and you know, last year they did a really nice job with redoing all the sidewalks and the curbing at Pompey Hollow Park. So <clears> where <throat> they did the work, they're planting um, grass in there. And it's kind of weird because grass is not coming up. It's this weird we weed stuff with a white flower, but I don't know where the grass is. Hopefully by concert time, that'll be coming in. Um, we have been asked, or we need to figure out um, how to maintain the plantings outside the tennis court. So they've gotten really full of weeds. Gwenedzima um, still comes each year and points out what's dead and gets the road crew to take it out. And then she calls me and says, what do you have for money? We have to replace three of these bushes and two of those bushes. And then she goes and buys them and asks the public works department to put them in. And they did that this past week. So there are, I don't know, five or six new bushes over there and one tree, it looks very nice. She's really good about, about getting that done. She's quite elderly and limited now and sure can't be doing the maintenance there. And we got to find a way to keep it weeded and put preen down on it and get uh, mulch down so that the weeds are, are kept out. I did the first bed that's near the tennis court with Hannah Drake because she needed community service hours for for National Honor Society and the two of us put in two hours and got that one bed looking good, but the other two are bigger and are now full of weeds. And I don't really think, I mean, I'm hoping that we can get volunteers who will help do it. Um, we have never budgeted to pay someone to keep those areas weeded. It is not something the Public Works Department will be doing. They will come and water, they will come and mulch, they will come and plant the new stuff, but they are not gonna come and weed. And so they look to me and say, who's gonna maintain this bed? Or, or, you know, you guys put this stuff in, but who's gonna maintain it? So that is one project we need to address over there. Um, another one is if you go out on the walking trail um, by the senior center, the bridges there, there's an overlook and then two bridges, they are due to be painted. In the past, we have done that with community service workers. Um, but right, right now I don't, we don't have any community service workers. So those are the two projects we need to work on at Pompey Hollow Park. At Ashford Memorial Park, um, Wayne Pekarvik, who's a, uh, um, really good with wood has um, uh, fixed 
our picnic tables. Um, we are replacing broken pieces each year. He has the pattern for the layout of those picnic tables that are now almost 25 years old, but they were so strong and sturdy when they were built that we're still getting good life and good use out of them. We're just finding that each year we need to replace a few more slats and more braces. Um, we just paid 350 in materials and 150 to Wayne for his work uh, repairing the picnic tables this year. Um, That's money well spent. Sorry. You mean that seriously, right? Uh -huh. You mean that seriously, right, Dan? Yeah, go buy a new picnic table, see what they cost. Yeah. Uh, They're really strong and sturdy ones. Yeah, I like those. They're very expensive. Uh-huh. So Sorry. we're continuing to get some good use out of them, Dan, is our plan. I may have an idea in regard to Pompeii um, Hello Park, but I don't want to mention it right now because I don't want to obligate anybody okay speaking with them first so are you talking about the weeding andrew or the possible painting or both possibly both okay but um yeah just i want to consult with them first yeah my goal would be to have those uh, flower beds those landscaping sections looking really nice before our summer concert series so um, that would be the timing on that one. And, and then the timing on the pa painting is anytime this summer, whenever it might work. All right, so th this, yeah, all right. I'll have to, yeah, okay. So one really cool thing I wanted to tell you guys about Ashford Memorial Park. Um, so we got lots of baseball and softball teams down there practicing. We also have a high school girls soccer team practicing Tuesday and Thursday nights on the big field. We have a younger kids like third and fourth grade girls soccer team on Monday and Thursday nights down there. And we have also been asked by a lacrosse team to use the multi-purpose field. And they're down there Mondays and Wednesdays from 5 to 6.30. So it's getting used every night of the week. We're getting multiple requests. If you go down there any night in April, May, you're going to see a minimum of 20 cars, sometimes more. It's been really busy and hopping down there. Um, baseball had their opening day on April 30th. And they had six games down there and made hundreds of dollars in the concession stand peddling soda and hot dogs and stuff. So that's really cool. I've been really pleased to see how much use it's getting down there. What'd they do about the soccer nets? What'd they do about? Soccer nets? Um, they have put some on. <coughs> So part of the reason we're part of the reason and rationale we're getting all this request is you know the big building project that's happening at Southeast School. Ah yes. All the Southeast School fields in Mansfield right now are unable to be used. So they have shifted up our way. Like the else. lacrosse team is regional from Pomfret through Willington, Mansfield, Ashford. Mm -hmm. And they have already requested, could we be their home field next summer? So they're looking to expand and they, uh, the towns they're all coming from, Ashford's in the middle of. So they wanna make Ashford Memorial Park their home site. This lacrosse team, Sherry, do you know if it, what age range it is? Yeah. Um, the guy's name is John Laughlin, and he's from Putnam, and his son plays on the team, and I know he's 10 years old, 10-year-old boy. Because Mansfield has a lacrosse um, team, which Noah is on, 
and they do Mansfield Ashford. Um, I think it's just Mansfield Ashford. So I'm surprised to hear there's a competing team in the same age bracket. Yeah, would ten be in the same age as Noah? I think of him as older than that. No, they yeah. they have a range. I think they start at um. I could be wrong, but I want to say they start at eight or nine. Um, so they start around what's that fourth, fifth grade, and they go through eighth grade. I don't. I don't think Neil that they're competing. I want to say they're all part of the same program. It just is a matter of where their coaches are coming from and how far out they go to fill a team. All right. You know what I mean? No, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's just I'm surprised to hear that there's another one that includes Ashford people because yeah. Ashford is a really small pool for lacrosse. Absolutely. All right. Anybody have any comments about park maintenance well, or I got a, the I got use a question. of things at Ashford Memorial Park or Pompey Hollow? I got a question, actually. For one, I was surprised that that's the lacrosse field of fit in that general purpose area. Yes. Yeah. No, it's no, no. The lacrosse. The that's lacrosse like a, that's a, that's a size team of is playing field. on the big soccer field. Okay. And so are the high school girls. And then the little girls soccer is on the all-purpose field. Okay. Now, the other thing is lacrosse is pretty nasty. What about our insurance? You know what I mean? Um, the club should be picking up the insurance. Yeah. So in terms, you know, because I have a little bit of info on that, not so much the town, but Noah, you have to be a member of the um, National Lacrosse League. You know, I think there's one or two of them. Um, they provide some insurance, but I mean, most of it is, you know, you, you hurt yourself. That's your problem, basically. You know, you, you can't sue the town, you know. It's a sport, you know. Correct. Right. Um, injuries to players, it falls under their own personal insurance. We would become liable or something if we were found to have big holes in our field or something where the playing surface or goals or something were faulty or that's when you become more liable. But generally... Injuries to players falls into their own personal insurance and whatever they sign with the team. They obviously sign some kind of waiver with the team. And also it's going to be up to the refs. They're supposed to inspect the field prior to the game and to make sure that the game is playable on the field itself. I've been doing it for 18 years, so that's why I know. Okay. Is that um, Dave uh, lacrosse or soccer? Soccer. soccer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Now, um, another thing. What about how will these fields withstand the game itself? How will these fields stand this much use? Yeah. So, um, you know, we'll see, um, we'll see, Andrew, because this is more use than usual. It depends on a lot of things. It depends on rain. It depends on how hot things get. It depends on usage. Um, we typically don't have a lot of use on our fields and they've held up well. You know, the grass is really pretty nice down there. Right. It's going to so up our maintenance we'll cost. It's going to up our maintenance costs. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not an expert again, you know, but kind of what, um, sorry, the other gentleman said is, you know, the refs will look at the field, you know, if it's getting torn up or it's wet or whatever, they're going to make decisions on that. You know, a lot of places, if it's been raining for, you know, five days straight, they're going to say, you know, no games because the field is just too soft. I, I think the, the team or the league or whatever, it's in their interest to keep 
it feels in good condition. So for the most part, they're conscious of what's happening. I'm just throwing these out as things to keep in mind. No problem. It's good questions, you know, but I, I yeah, now some of that I think has, you know, when you provide access to the field, to the group or whatever it is, you know, they, they, they have that you know, uh, civic responsibility to make sure it's good because if you guys ruin it, you ain't coming back next year, right? Correct. Now, um, excuse me. My, in to my knowledge, the worst one there is uh, if they play anyway when it's super wet and the cleats of the players are just tearing up and, you know, pulling dirt up every time they run up and down the field that you're, you're not going to um, – that's going to do some permanent damage to the field that, you know, I say permanent for the rest of the season anyway. So that's what we watch out for. And yes, we would have the authority to go in and say, Hey, you're not playing on our fields as would a referee have the right to say, these aren't safe or no, this is not good. You're going to ruin the field if we play. So. Do we charge for the use of the field? Um, we have not, um, well, we rented out one time to a football league and we charged them. And if anybody from out of town, like comes to us asking to rent the field for something, we would charge them. If it's a sports league that is servicing our kids or our, um, residents, yeah. we don't usually charge. But this is all stuff we can look at, you guys. The other thing that's happening down at the park extensively right now is we have parties. Every weekend, it's the party place, I'm telling you. We have so far since April, we have had one, two, three, four, five, five special event, birthday parties, baptism, baby showers, at the pavilion. Yeah, I'm going there next uh, Sunday. Ah. Dana Robinson. So that's the place to be the party crasher. <laughs> Thanks for giving us a heads up. Come on down. <laughs> Sat yeah, I think Sunday at one o'clock. You know, all of Ashford now knows. It'd be a good distraction. <laughs> what's what's yes, the occasion guard? It's a baby Next shower. Sunday from 10 to 4 is a baby shower. It's Andrea's niece. Ah. So our policy, which can be revisited, you guys, we haven't really looked at this for a number of years, has been that if it's an in-town resident, we don't charge anything. Mm -hmm. They're just asked to take all their trash with them and leave the place better than they found it. Yeah. Um, if it is an out of town person asking to reserve, we ask them for a donation and they usually say, oh, like, what do you mean? And I have been throwing out the number of twenty five dollars and have gotten that from two groups so far this year. Um, Are any of these organizations for profit? Um, no, but sometimes your request for the field might be a club team that is expecting to pay for field use. Now, I just keep that in mind for profit organizations. I no. yeah, most of the time for parties, um, in no, no, I'm talking about individuals. The fields. I'm talking about the usage of the fields, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, I can do a little bit of research too and find out what other park and recs charge. Would that be helpful, you think, you guys? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me write that down. Only because I'm sure other other parks do it as well. Dave, would you know since you've you've uh, said you've you were a ref in soccer, you said? 
But you, usually the fields are, um, unless you're having a jamboree, then they charge for the field. But most of the time, the fields are not, um, there's no fee to it. Because exactly what Sherry was saying, as long as that they're catering to the residents of that particular town, there's no charge or fee. Yeah, like I was saying, if it's a for-profit organization, then you would right because it, it's like, it's like um, going back a couple of years ago when they had the um, soccer jamboree that took up all the fields. Mm. They, um, they donated some money to the different towns. Um, and that, that was about it. Hmm. But for Wham and other places, no, there's, um, I don't think they're charging whatsoever. Okay, anybody have anything else to talk about in terms of park maintenance or usage at Ashford Memorial or Pumpy Hollow Park? Okay, um, coming up next is our summer programs and I, I just wanted to update you about uh, what's in the works there and also what our challenges are. Um, we have bike camp lined up. Thank you to Garth for that. We have it set for the last week in June this year, which is a little earlier than usual, but that's because Garth is headed to Colorado. So I wanted to grab him for bike camp before he left. We've got it planned for um, June 27th through July 1. It'll be 9 to 11 in the morning at Ashford Memorial Park. And Garth, we already have three kids signed up. Oh. I know it's not even mid-May yet, and they're signing up for your bike camp because they know how fun it is. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. It's um, the popsicles. The popsicles are the draw. It's the popsicles. No, it's you. Um, we we always have fun with that. Um We've also got swimming lessons planned for the summer. We're going to do an early summer swim session. It'll be at the Evangelical Christian Center pool. It'll be starting the first week in June. It'll be on Mondays. Um, so our spring lessons are ending this coming Wednesday. We'll take a couple weeks off and then we'll run a six week session on Monday nights for swimming lessons. Um, interestingly, I don't know why, but we tend to get different kids in the summer for swim lessons than we do like in the spring session. So it seems to be a good thing that we offer both spring and summer. We, what our typical schedule for lessons are is six weeks in the fall, six weeks in the spring, and then an early summer session of six weeks as well. What uh, night sessions? It's going to be Monday, and fortunately, our instructors, we used to run 6 o'clock to like 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, I've really pushed the instructors to try to go with an earlier schedule, and they've adjusted their work so that they can come in at 4.30. We're starting at 4.30, and we'll go till 7, which is a lot better for families, especially the ones with young kids. Mm -hmm where the bulk of our swimmers now are preschool level one, level two. So that's usually ages like three to six or seven is where the bulk of our swimmers will be. All right, um, we're gonna try to do some summer basketball again. I'm going to uh, hopefully get Matt Dombrowski and um, Jacob Hall back to run some clinics and nights of basketball like they did for us last summer. Um, and I've got to nail down dates and times with them. Um, we're also, of course, doing our summer concert series and we're hoping to do our camp out and hoping, hoping to end the summer with our Labor Day 5K. I still have not heard a confirmed yes from the 
timing company. I did ask him again this week if he would commit to that date or time, and they, I haven't heard from him. Our campouts typically the end of August. Um, and the biggest dilemma I have right now with summer programming is in the past, we have run a summer camp just for a couple of weeks. And if we get 20 kids for it, it's worth our while. Um, but logistically, summer camp is really hard for us because we're not set up to run a camp. For example, we typically run it where we spend mornings down at Ashford Memorial Park and then afternoons up here at Pompey Hollow Park where we also use Warrenville Post Office for arts and crafts or where we might have um, the library as an option if it was raining or um, if it was just too hot to be outside anymore. Um, but the issue we have is that when it starts raining, uh, we need busing transportation. And we've got to find ways each day to get the kids from one place to the other or get them in and out of the rain if that you know, comes up. We also usually bus them to swimming two days a week when we run camp. And then we also have a day of a field trip that goes out somewhere. Um, so the schedule that we've run has been pretty good. The main uh, issue I have right now is I don't have any staff. I don't have any camp counselors to run camp with. Melissa has typically helped me with it in the past. She used to take mornings and I took afternoons and then we both could still, you know, be in our office some that week, but, uh, She's not real interested in doing it. In fact, would like to opt out if, if she can. So our motivations are a little bit different. I'm motivated financially to try to make it happen. And she does not have the same kind of expectations or demands on her financially. So anyway, we've, we've run it. Uh, we haven't run it the last two years because of COVID. We do make a couple thousand at it if we get 20 kids or over. But if we're gonna do it, we, we, we need to decide in the next couple of weeks. And I have been steering away from it because I don't have any staff right now. Typically it ran the end of June, which is now where we have slid bike camp into. If we were gonna do it, I would suggest that we went in early July with it. Anybody know of high school seniors or freshmen and sophomores in college that will be home and looking for, you know, a job in the summer that are really good with kids or um, training to be teachers, training to be rec professionals or daycare providers? Those are typically the ones that would make good camp counselor uh, people for us um, with, with our camp. Everybody's looking for employees. <laughs> it's crazy. Yep. And this is, you know, this is a, I'm looking for a two week fit here. I'm not looking to hire them for the summer. Logistically, our setup and layout is just too hard to run a summer camp all summer. So we've managed to pull it off in the past for a couple of weeks, but. Well, I know Holiday Hill's gonna go at it full force this year. They kind of had a rough couple of years. Yep. So I know they're, they're requesting three or four buses every day to pick up kids you know they pick up kids in like Farmington and Manchester and all over the place Farmington wow. yeah they that's send a hell of a call. Out all over the place I didn't my realize kids they go for an hour drive to camp? camp like that 
No, they they go. I know. I I actually drove the Manchester one for a couple of weeks before COVID because somebody got sick. But uh, yeah, and they go to Farmington. They go to maybe South Windsor too. I'm not sure. They go to four different towns and pick kids up. That's like an hour away, right? Forty five minutes an hour. Yeah. That's just well, crazy. It's not cheap either. Holiday Hill is not a cheap place to go to camp. Not at all. Now, there's no like prereqs for these for a camp counselor. <laughs> what was that, Andrew? There's no like prereqs for like someone to be considered a camp counselor, or they just got to be someone that's willing to play with kids. Yeah, play with kids. Well, they would interview. They would interview and you'd do a background check on them, of course. Um, hmm. Holiday hmm. Hill, um, Dudley Hamill is the guy's name. He is very involved with the Lions Club. And the Lions Club gives lots of money to local organizations and scholarship funding. You guys remember that they give us um, yeah. usually $3,000 a year. And how Melissa and I have chosen to use it is a thousand of it goes toward rec programs and 2000 of it goes in camperships in the summertime, supporting various kids in town that can't afford camp or the way we advertise it is we say, we believe every kid should go to camp. And then we say, fortunately, so does the Lions Club. Scholarship funding available, apply here. Um, and honestly, we don't get enough applications. And so some years we're limited in getting all that money back again because we can't use it all. Um, some years Melissa has used all of her camp scholarship funding. I rarely use all of mine each year, just based on requests. But um, to keep you guys in the loop with that, maybe at our next meeting, I will show you our scholarship funding um, run sheet so you know what has gone out. Um, but when you see the advertisement or if anybody is ever asking, please let them know that we have scholarship funding. Um, the only the only restriction on it is that they need to be under 18 years old and they need to be an Ashford resident to get at this pool of funding that we have. Some of the other towns have the same source or other sources, but um, a kid would need to be from Ashford to get this funding. And they, they fill out a one page form based on their income that goes to Melissa and she approves them. Um, or not, and what typically happens if, if it's one kid in a family and they're deemed needy, we would pay 90% of the cost of camp for them or the soccer program they want to do or whatever. Or if there's multiple kids in a family, we do 50% scholarships. So it's pretty generous and it makes a difference, but like I said, we have not been able to use up all that funding. So that's just an update with that. Um, anybody have any thoughts or feelings like, here's a little dilemma that Melissa and I get into philosophically. Um, and we both said, you know, we wanna run a camp. We don't wanna provide daycare but truly they kind of become one in the same. And what happens is people are willing to pay for childcare. So if we do run our camp and it does run from like 8.30 to four or something, it does become daycare for those parents who work. Right. 
anybody have a strong feeling about whether they're hearing from families that there's a real need there or you think there's enough camps out there already? Don't kill yourself, Sherry, trying to force it to happen. Um, there are plenty of I've camps. had probably four <laughs> or five families contact me saying, will there be summer camp this year? There are plenty of camps out there. They just happen to be pretty expensive. And Lair, yep. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that just can't afford it. Yeah, I think our summer camp, I'd have to pull it up, but I'm I'm pretty sure that we ran under just under $200 for the week if we were doing um, camp for a kid for, um, you know, like 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, it would cost you $200. Then we said, if you have a brother or a sister, um, we'd do it for 150 for each kid. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what the pricing of it was in the past. Hmm. Um, and you plan to maintain those prices? I haven't gotten that far with it, Neil. Probably. It? Yeah, because I don't know what your costs are, but you know, costs have gone up across the board. So I don't yeah. know how that. It's true. Just to like, you know, the busing I talked to you about. Um, you're paying a driver, you're paying the gas for any of the busing that we need to do. Fill up your oil tank lately? Oof. I haven't. No, it is. Um, it's over. I think I, I don't want two, to. I put 100 I, gallons two weeks ago. It was like 520 a gallon. I mean, diesel at the pump is almost $6. It's insane. It's, it was over $6 today. Wow. I went to get... um. Mm. Uh, oil change for my wife. I normally buy my own oil and change the oil. Normally, it's like twenty dollars for a you know a gallon, twenty between you know for the premium stuff between twenty and twenty six. It was forty one dollars for a gallon. Wow, crazy! I'm still paying it off, uh, Dan, from the last time they filled it. In the spring for me, you know. Um, um, a friend of mine at Tall and the tank was empty. They took on 220 gallons or something. It was like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It sure is. But so, even, even I'm this, thinking typically it's around 1000 to fill your tank, right? For me, it's normally, you know, last year it was 400 450 for me to fill a 275-gallon tank. Um, because, but yeah, it's over a thousand dollars if I had to do it now. I know the uh, the buses we drive don't get very good gas mileage, you know, and they get negative mileage. <laughs> just about, <laughs> especially. I mean, they just, you know, they're scrambling, you know, because they didn't but they didn't budget for diesel fuel to go up, you know. 60 or 70 percent this year you know and it's not done yet i don't think we're going to see it you know the, the rise is not done let's put it like that it's gonna there is no end in sight to the prices rise it's crazy um so so sherry yes you are going to be the leader the manager of the day camp yes so you'll need how many assistants two um the last two times we ran it we had sabrina cosgrove and Haley ignatowitz who were two college girls that we paid from 8 30 to 4 30 both days you know every day and they were great we can, the three of us or a staff of three, and it used to be, you know, I was back up for Melissa and she was back up for me as quote unquote camp director. Um, uh, we can pull it off with 20 kids with that kind of staffing. Um, we also tried one year to do a, um, shared kind of thing with Willington's 
uh, camp director and it didn't work out. We didn't have enough kids to warrant another position or something that would pay another position. So. Is that about what you expected, Andrew, or does that make sense to you guys? I'm doing some math. I'm doing some math. The girls worked for us for three years, and the third year we ended up, you know, we gave them a little bit more money each year. They were very good. And as you know, with something like that, your staff can either make it or break it. It can either make your life heaven or hell every day <laughs> that it runs. How much did you make in this? We made uh, almost, when, when I ran it with Melissa, we split the profit. We split everything down the middle. Um, when when she was unable to do it one year, we made almost two thousand. Each. Um, no, when we had to thousand. split profits, yeah. it was a little. It was less. Maybe more like twelve hundred each. I know that around 20 kids is our uh, is our kind of breaking point. Like if you got under 20 kids, it's really not worth it to do it. If you're close to 20, you can. And, you know, 25 with that staffing ratio is probably your max. Hey, how, how close are we to finishing this up? Very. That's good. In fact, I'm all done with the agenda. Um, Dave, do you have anything you'd like to say or add or talk to people about? Or um... No, not really. Just, okay. Um, just listening to everybody and that's about it. Okay. Um, Thank you, everybody. I hope this. I hope you found this information. Um, I, I like to update you on what's happening and where things are at, um, and get your feedback on it. Um, and I will, you know, send out an email update for how things progress. And if you guys have any information to share on these numerous topics we covered, please. Um, Fire it back and we'll plan to meet again in June. Where did you go? Me? I can't see anybody. I'm still oh. here, Dan. Hey, could you get my right e get my right email address again? Yeah, I know it's not the 59 one, it's the other one. No, it is the 59 one. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still have them both in my computer. Um, Dan. Yeah, just, just get rid of the 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 snet snet net one. Just delete it. Okay. Then you won't have to make decisions. Because <laughs> it sounds like I made the wrong one a new number of times. Because I was convinced your fifty nine uh, no, that's email was not one. the right one. All right, well, are we all set for tonight, you guys? I think so. Good. Yeah. Thank you, everybody.